To the delineation. An astrology show with Cam White. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Delineation. I need to keep better account of what episode this is. I believe it's episode 16. So today's episode is going to be, I don't want to say intense, but we're going to be talking about the hard topics that uh, seem to be plaguing society, but kind of the elephant in the room that no one wants to address, especially in the astrology community now. Uh, I am kind of going off the cuff on this because this was something that has been really brought to my attention specifically today. And I kind of also want to explain that. I mean, today is the full moon in Aquarius. And um, if also, by the way, I'm back on Twitter. Um, I know, uh, long story short, I'm back on there. If you want to follow me, go for it. I'm going to try not to be on there as much, but uh, Cam White Astro, it's the same at name. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from the, the tweeting and everything like that. However, I just needed somewhere in case you know, something happened where people can have uh, reach me or have access to my content. But today is the uh, full moon in Aquarius. And on my Twitter, I was saying that uh, it's less a full moon on Aquarius and more so a full moon on Saturn, which is a really important distinction here because Saturn's in Aquarius, right? Typically, a full moon in Aquarius wouldn't necessarily be this heavy, but it is on its ruler this time, which is extra potent. And especially because a full moon is involving the sun and the sun's in its home sign, right? So you really have this opposition of the sun and Leo and Saturn and Aquarius coming together right now. So, uh, and also Saturn is my time Lord. If you're not familiar, uh, some of you may be familiar with annual perfections and things like that. I'm in a third house year. So it's about communication, technology, Aquarius rules, my third house, and Saturn's my time lord, and it's in Aquarius. And so this full moon's on my time lord. So this is stuff that is actually happening for me today. And so that's why this whole topic's coming up. But what I want to talk about today is the Aquarian divide that's going on right now. And how, if we're not careful about this, I mean, I don't even say if we're not careful about this. We've been into it for, for, for a while now. I mean, it has been in the, t- the past two years. Saturn's been in Aquarius. But this isn't Saturn's first rodeo in Aquarius. It's been through here plenty of times before. And each time it does, these type of things seem to come up. Why this is more important, in my opinion, is we're coming into this Pluto and Aquarius period. And if you want to know what I talk, uh, what I think about that, I already did an episode about it. I'm going to be making another delineation about it. And I will eventually be making an episode how it's going to be affecting your zodiac sign. However, uh, this is the full moon on Saturn in Aquarius. When you talk about what a full moon is, this is like realizing things, things coming to full fruition. The moon lights up the night and it lights up the dark. So there's this idea that we can't always see, you know, what we can't see, right? The the darkness, the night, the underworld. When it comes to a new moon, it becomes really dark and you can't see everything. But the full moon allows you to see things that normally or usually you may not be able to see well. This full moon is happening on Saturn. And, you know, I keep seeing a lot of people on Twitter being like, full moon on Saturn and Aquarius, set your boundaries. And there's some truth to that. But I think what needs to be brought up more is this divide that we have going on. And this really the idea that we need to put people into boxes to understand them better, rather than judging them for their own individuality. Now, that is a uh, really long discussion. And I just got done reading an article by Gordon White. You could check it out. Actually, I'll, if, if I remember, I'll put a link to it in the description. But um, he has an article about astrology and fascism and stuff like that. And, and there's a whole group of people that, you know, like to use astrology to, you know, put themselves into boxes like, oh, I'm just a cancer. So X, Y, and Z or, or this and this and that. And and while there's fun to that, right, there's there's a, you know, I don't like to be like, oh, we can't have fun with sun sign astrology, we can't have fun with astrology, but, you know, it's not as simple as you're just one sign, right? You are your whole birth chart. And when we talk about your birth chart, we're talking about where the planets were, where exactly they were in the sky, according to your exact location, and having that plus your, you know, environmental uh, circumstances play a role into your life and your fate and your destiny. And so I really think astrology offers the most uh, individual way to honor someone Um, because you could, again, you could see everything. It's not just about, oh, you're an Aquarius or, oh, you're a Pisces or blah, 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 or or any of that stuff or because your X, Y, and Z is, is why you do these things. While it can be easy to rationalize that stuff, that's not the whole truth. And I, I, and, and again, and this is something I want to talk about in this episode is I am not perfect. 
and I'm a human being working on this stuff too. But this is why I'm talking to you guys about it. Because the number one thing is, is I can't sit here and be honest with you guys and say, oh, like I, I'm doing all of this stuff super perfect. Why aren't you? You're not good enough or stuff like that. Like I am a human being that is just as, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Influenced by the powers that be as everyone else is. And I'm working on navigating this and I'm working on how to deal with this. And what I mean this is, is this uh, Aquarian divide. I mean, when you look at w when Saturn first entered Aquarius, um, you know, a, a good example of this that I heard recently was the whole George Floyd protest versus the COVID protest. And I still heard people being like, oh, these were the good guys and these were the bad guys. And people can't still see how both can be bad and both can be good. You know, Black Lives Matter was really important because, yeah. Um, unarmed black men get shot all the time by police officers. It's not a crazy thing to say that police are corrupt and they're not trained well. And then they also uh, end up hiring people that have mental illnesses and that have these prejudices against black people. And so they shoot them before they even get to know the situation. However, the Black Lives Matter protests also completely like shut down cities, destroyed a lot of private uh, citizens' businesses. Um, it was literally a psyop. They literally put in bricks in uh, police cars for them to burn up. So it placated into this narrative that they wanted you to do that. But if you have any, which also in the Black Lives Matter Foundation just robbed people of their money and did zero for black people, which in my opinion, when you use black people's uh, problems as a profit motive is more racist in my opinion than anything else. So while I would agree, and again, the whole problem with Black Lives Matter too is you say something with Black Lives Matter, like how could you disagree with that? So it sets you up for the situation where, oh, like, you know, you know, another time when Saturn was in Aquarius was in the 90s. And I think a lot about that Seinfeld episode. Um, if you haven't watched Seinfeld, I God, it's a really good show. But there's an episode where they're doing an HIV walk and there's a little ribbon that you wear. And I believe, jo uh, not George, I believe Jerry didn't want to wear the ribbon. And these two guys were like, who, who is not wearing the ribbon? And it turned into like, oh, you don't agree with us because you're not doing this thing. And it's like, well, I just don't want to wear the ribbon. And it's, there's a whole episode about this because again, there's nothing new under the sun. This is all stuff that humans have been dealing with for thousands of years. But when you say things like, oh, like black lives, like, oh, you don't believe black lives matter. That puts you into the situation where there is no, you know, compromise or, or anything or, or understanding of the situation or having nuance in the situation without dividing people already. So, you know, it's, it's complicated to go about that situation because there were good starts about that, right? Like, you know, it, it, you know, in my personal opinion, and a lot of people disagree with this too, because I have viewers on the left and the right. And that's, can I just say also too, I'm so thankful for my following. Like you guys, I love how many people disagree with the things that I say and how many people do agree, because I feel the, the biggest thing that I would want to cultivate is free thinkers here and people that aren't afraid to discuss things or not afraid to look at things the other way. But, um, you know, you also have like the COVID protest people and a lot of those people, you know, were really, you know, vindicated as like evil and bad. And how could they do this? You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but also like, I don't know if you guys know this, but like, for example, in places like Los Angeles, which is primarily small business owned, uh, they shut down all the small businesses to let places like Target, Walmart, and all these other big major corporations and liquor stores too, they could be open, but small mom and pop businesses that, which is, this is all they had for their living, which also a lot of people in Los Angeles that own small businesses were also immigrants or people of color because it's a very diverse city. They locked them all out. They blocked them all out. And these COVID restrictions, there was no, uh, you know, there's nothing in the law that says that they can do that. There's nothing that, you know, says that it was going to even work. There was zero science backing it up, but then they were, you know, judgment now, I will give the, you know, the benefit here of people that are like, oh, that was really bad of like, you know, uh, when the COVID lockdowns first started happening too, I was one of the people that were like, why are these people like, what's wrong with two weeks to slow the spread, right? Because I was, I was under this guise of this stuff, right? Like, you know, two weeks into the lockdowns, I didn't know they were going, you know, it was going to get worse and worse and worse. The disease isn't going to stop. And then also they were going to, you know, not only provide a vaccine, but they were going to force you to take it. And if you didn't take it, you're going to lose your job. And then also you were going to be called a spreader of disease if you didn't take the vaccine, which also never worked because the vaccines didn't work the way that they were promised because you could still spread the disease and you could still get it with the vaccine. So anyway, why I'm bringing all of this up is society is extremely divided, but what they do and this is the Aquarian stuff. The whole reason I'm bringing this up is we still got a little bit of Saturn Aquarius to go. We ain't done yet. And we still have Pluto to go through Aquarius. 
These are all things that we're going to be dealing with for the next two decades. It's not going anywhere soon. But they want to divide us on everything that they can. And they want you to put people into boxes, into labels in order to make things easier. Now, um, the reason this is coming up. So uh, I will let me let me preface this with this. I am being vulnerable in the in the sense that on this show, on my channel, I am extremely honest. I'm so honest with you guys that it gets me in trouble. And there are a lot of astrologers out there, I won't name names, are too afraid to be honest because they would rather make sure that they can pay their bills than live an honest life and be honest with their following. I can't disagree or negate that, but I can maybe say I don't respect that in a sense and I'm going to do things differently where I have control and that's going to be honest with you guys. So uh, why this is all coming up for me in this moment, why I think this is maybe good to talk about is something happened on my Discord. Uh, if you don't know, on my Patreon, I have a Discord group chat. We're all talking about stuff where um, something I had said was received as homophobic and someone, you know, was, you know, concerned they didn't feel safe. And so uh, they, you know, got off my Patreon, but then they messaged me about it, which I really appreciate because um, I was attacked really hardcore online on Twitter before about stuff that I have said. And no one came to me personally about it. Like, I didn't know for a long time what I did wrong. I didn't know what was going on because I was just being attacked in all corners. And I really commend this person for like going out of their way when, again, to something uh, that I truly understand is, you know, uh, there's a parasocial relationship. Um, I am a guy. People, you know, definitely get intimidated about me sometimes. And I want to make sure I provide safe places. And so people don't, you know, feel necessarily always like the urge to say what they feel to me because, you know, there's that fear factor and other things like that. So I really commend this person for reaching out to me. But what they said, you know, you made a comment that was really homophobic and you know, it made me feel unsafe. I'm going to discuss the comment here in a minute. Um, now, what I want to bring up, though, is this this homophobic thing, because uh, this is also too. if you watch, I did a video the other day about like men's mental health and I used gay as kind of like a like a slur or as a derogatory term. And someone was like, hey, you need to make a video about. If you whether or not you support gay, so I know if I'm supporting a bigot or not. Look, it's 2022. I don't give a fuck if you're gay. I literally do not care. Um, I was, I mean, I, and also too, I can understand why people are like getting offended me using gay as derogatory. Like, I think people have the right to maybe see me like, oh, that's a little, a little bit offensive. But the way I look at it is like, I mean, look at any comedy movie in the 2000s. Like, people are using gay in derogatory ways uh, like all the time. It's not. I guess the craziest thing, and I'm not saying anything explicitly that's like anti-gay people. Like I'm not saying like gay people can't have like kids or stuff like that, or they can't get married. Like, um, and that's something I've also been very vocal about on my channel too, is how like without the gay community, there really wouldn't be this big uprising in astrology as of late. Cause the gay community really kind of like, um, dug astrology up from the dead in a lot of ways. So I have a lot of gratitude there now, but this is again, why I'm bringing this up is, society and the powers that be, and again, to back up here for a minute, if you want to know how the world works, very simple terms, there are people that are in power and they're going to stay in power. And the way that they're going to do that is by dividing people into all of these little groups so they get busy fighting each other so they can remain there. This is all of history. Literally all of history is that. It's never going to change. And they want to divide us between uh, class. They want to divide us now on race. They want to divide us on gender, on sex, on, uh, you know, whether or not you're, you're this, you're that. Oh, do you, you know, are you like, do you support all black lives and all the trans lives or this or that? And, and it's, it's just this way to divide us. And so what I get a little bit frustrated with is, so let me go to this comment. So, um, in my discord, uh, I was talking about a, a friend, how he doesn't like Denver. And um, I brought up the fact that it's a very liberal city here in Denver, which is actually kind of surprising. A lot of people don't know that, but it's very, very liberal. And here in the liberal cities, a lot of liberal cities, I'm not sure how it really looks all across the U.S., but I know in the West Coast more predominantly, uh, there's a lot of virtue signalers uh, in the sense that, you know, you go down the street here and everyone's got a Ukraine and a, and a pride flag. And the comment that I made was... Uh, here, let me just read it to you so I'm not just like paraphrasing. I'll, I'll read you the comment here. Let me get to it. So the comment was, uh, 
I said, uh, the amount of rainbow flags everywhere is almost unnerving because literally either everyone is gay or everyone is so terrified they feel like they have to have a rainbow flag. LOL. And this was took it as homophobic. Okay. I can sympathize. I'm, I'm, I'm a Libra moon. I'm pretty good about looking at other people's perspective of things. And can that come off as homophobic? Yeah, I guess. Um, what part of it was homophobic, in my opinion, I don't know. Because this is the issue I would like to discuss. The reason I brought this up is um, in the society right now, uh, there is this big cause for virtue signaling. Saturn Aquarius. Hey, are you one of the good guys or are you one of the bad guys? Are you with us? Because if you're not, you're against us. And that binary, again, people love to say gender is not a binary, yet they throw everything else in a binary spectrum. There's not a lot of binaries in life, guys. There's not a lot of them. Now, I can, again, you know, I might have different uh, beliefs and opinions about the whole gender thing and whatever, but that's not really a conversation for today. Um, but there's not a lot of things that are really binary. And in fact, uh, if you're looking at life just through this binary of like, oh, it's us versus them. And the thing is, there's people that are looking at to that and truly believe it. But then there's a lot of people out there. It might even be you that have been hijacked to think this stuff. I used to be that way. I used to think, you know, if you weren't any like, because again, a lot of people think I'm like super far right. Like I still consider myself very liberal. I just, I think Democrats and stuff like that are very far beyond of what people, like people love to say that there's no left in America, but then they say still vote Democrat. I'm like, well, if there's no left, aren't they the right? Aren't they the right? Anyway, that's a whole nother thing. But we've been hijacked to think in these terms in order to attack each other. Now, uh, what I did, let me just say this too. In my Discord, I, I messaged this person back and I said, hey, you know, um, I'm sorry that you felt very uncomfortable. The last thing I want to do is um, make people feel uncomfortable in the space that I'm harboring. I'm not perfect. And I'm, this is also, I have no idea how to navigate social group chats. And if you're in a group chat, you know that it's weird to navigate. And so I am really trying my best. So I really did say like, hey, you know, I, I apologize for creating that space. However, I'm not going to defend myself and sit here and be like, oh, I'm not homophobic. And let me explain why. So when it comes to this cancellation stuff or whatever, which I, I let me also address this too. This person said that they were afraid of bringing this up because they didn't want me to look at them as like, I'm canceling them. And that's a really fair criticism. I bring that up a lot and I could see how someone might be afraid to say that. So I had to address on my discord, Hey, like, I want you at, at the minimum to like, if you have a problem with it, feel comfortable with either addressing it with me or someone else or talking about it. Cause I'm not trying to make an enemy out of anyone here. I've got better things to do. So I'm very aware of that, that power dynamic and I'm still learning how to navigate it. And again, all, all I can really ask for people is to be, you know, patient with me, uh, and you know, to, um, again, give, at least give me the benefit of the doubt. And, and in trade, I can be honest with you guys because that's what I'm doing here. Because a lot of you might even listen to this and might disagree with a lot of things that I say. But where I find value in the way that I approach things is I'm gonna be honest with you guys, whether I'm, I'm, I'm right or I'm wrong. And there's things that I've been wrong about. If you go and watch my horoscopes back in 2020, you probably could probably get the just like the the you could probably get the vibe that like I was kind of more pro lockdown, pro mandate. You know, two years on, two and a half years later, I'm kind of I'm actually really against that stuff now. But um, you know, because people's minds change. I'm still a young person. I'm only 26, and while I can recognize that you know I am an adult, I have a lot of responsibilities. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. And to be honest with you guys, a lot of you have been on the ride with me, watching me grow up in a lot of weird ways. And so it's all I'm trying to say here is that it's it's a weird place to navigate and I'm not perfect, but I want to be very clear with you guys that there was a problem and I addressed it in the best way that I could. However, why I'm bringing this up is the just being called homophobic. Now, in my last in that video I did about um saying like uh oh like using gay as a derogatory term and someone's like, "Hey, like I saw a comment that was like, "Hey, are you like homophobic because I don't want and you need to make a video about explaining why you're not homophobic because I don't want to be supporting a bigot. So there's a lot of things to dissect there. One, um, I can understand how that might come off as homophobic. Like I'm totally sympathetic to that. I would hope that given like uh, it's 2022, like most people aren't even like even conservatives aren't like really like right wing people aren't even that homophobic anymore. Um, and I'm not. 
And I don't need to sit here and tell you why and make sure I'm signaling my virtue so I don't get attacked. The problem I have with this though, is that it's not about an apology because how this works, and I've experienced this before, and if you've been attacked online, if you've been attacked by people, which a lot of you have, this is something I've been saying too, is that you, if you think you're on the good guy side, just wait, there's gonna be a topic that comes up that you might have a differing opinion and then they're gonna come after you. And then you can go, wow, it is a little bit unfair when people attack you that way. These people on Twitter that attack everybody, they don't want an apology. Well, they want an apology from you, not because they wanna make sure that you're sorry, but it's because they want obedience. Why aren't you staying in line? Why aren't you being this way? And what they do is they weaponize these labels and say, well, are you, you know, what? You don't believe Black Lives Matter? What, you're, you're, you're homophobic? What, you're transphobic? Anything like that? In order to uh, diminish like your own individual like beliefs or morality, and they wanna put you into a group to say, hey, you're the bad person. And by the way, this is how they got to kill Nazis. Like if you wanna know how, like people go, oh my God, how did we ever start exterminating, not, uh, not Nazis, my bad, Jewish people. I can't believe I said that. Um, this is how they started exterminating Jewish people is with that type of language, when that, with that type of narrative. Um, and that's also a thing too, when you go into the history of Saturn Aquarius, it doesn't look good every single time. And so it's really important to understand that, for example, I mean, last winter, Joe Biden, the president of the fucking United States said this. And this is where, you know, I was just to be, and again, I, all I can do is be honest with you guys. That's all I can do as, only, as an astrologer and as, as a content creator. I can't tell you if what I'm doing is the right way or the wrong way. I can't tell you if this is the best way or the wrong way. And, and, and if I was saying that, fuck me for doing that. Listen to someone else. The only thing I can do is be honest with everything I believe in and everything I'm telling you guys is what I believe in. And you can judge me for that. But really where I got over Joe Biden, because I had a lot more faith in him than, than, you know, than I do right now. What really turned me is he said, you know, this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And there was this whole trope in this world to say, there is a group of people that are vectors of disease and we need to take away their jobs and take away their rights and ostracize them from society in order to heal society. That is what they did to the Jews, okay? This is why it's not just like, oh, that was a little offensive. Like that, in my opinion, is not how the, the leader of the free world should ever speak. Um, just like Trump's mean tweets are really bad, I don't believe Joe Biden should have said that. And that's where I crossed the line. Um, now, when you say it's the pandemic of the unvaccinated, now you're giving everyone the weapons to say, that, oh, this is all their fault. This is all their fault. And you can just blame everyone on a group of people because it's so easy. Like, this is the same problem with, uh, like, um, uh, Republicans. They love blaming, like, literally everything on, like, Muslims and, and Mexicans. Now, let me also say, there, like, is, there are problems in this world and both sides have a lot of good arguments. Like, something I really hate seeing because I get accused of this, of, like, you're just saying right-wing talking points. <laughs> Well, if you only think that way, then yeah, that is how it's going to be. But if you actually use the big ass brain you have and you actually use it, you might be able to go, well, there are certain points that one side might have and there are other points that another side might have that are both good and we need to figure out maybe which one's most appropriate for the time that comes. And so blaming, for example, well, blaming the unvaccinated, uh, why I'm bringing this up is this makes it so easy has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, uh, people like Fauci and uh, all these other people in EcoHealth Alliance are using taxpayer dollars to manufacture uh, diseases that are more deadly and more spreadable than they ever would have been before in the name of getting grant money. We don't need to talk about that. We need to blame the people that did not want to take a medicine that was legislated for them to take or they'd lose their job and it had no testing background. It's never been done before. It's a different, it's not even, I mean, they had to change the little definition of a vaccine. And you, whatever you want to, if you're, if you're, if you're pro vax I'm not even here to be in that divide. But what I'm trying to say here is that when you do this type of stuff and you just, oh, it's that easy. It's you are this label and it's that simple. And that's the problem. And all of our problems would be solved if just this one group of people stopped being that way. This is how you allow fascism. This is how you allow Nazis. This is how you allow genocides to happen. And um, it's, a little, it's a little terrifying, to be honest with you guys. 
because I my job is to look at the future. And in order to do that, I learn about the past. And the past is really fucked up. And every single time it, it this stuff is coming up, it's it makes me, you know, truly worried about the future. I'll be honest with you guys. Now, I've also been, you know, accused of like not being positive enough. And I like, okay, like you want you want me to be positive? Okay, here's how I'll be positive. If you don't take actions into your own hands, if you don't do something about your own circumstance, then like shit's gonna fall apart. Where I think things might be positive, um, I think because things are gonna get so bad, we are going to get to a breaking point in which we have to do something about it. Cause that's how typically things go. Ask really anyone in like a really abusive relationship, it has to get so bad. It has to be so bad that you're actually willing to do something about it. And it's clearly not bad enough yet because we're not really doing anything about it. So I don't necessarily have, I don't wanna say I don't have any hope for the future. There's gonna be good times and there's gonna be bad times, but this idea of just placating these sides and separating us by you know gender, by race, by class, by income, by who did you vote for, by, I mean, they're even trying to separate children from their parents now. And also, I mean, if you really go into like, if you want to get into like some hardcore conservative politics and you also want to know why like black people have been disenfranchised for so long, it's because they separate the children from their families and they separate, they break up the family. If you don't know anything about that, watch some Thomas Sowell. If you really want to actually get some education in politics and in history, watch some Thomas Sowell, read some Thomas Sowell books. Um, I can't recommend him enough for this type of stuff. But um, why I'm, again, going back to why I'm bringing this up is this, um, you know, me being called homophobic. Okay. Like I, let me give people benefit of the doubt. The biggest thing was I didn't want, I don't want people to feel, especially cause I, I know I have a ton of queer following, um, whether you're gay, trans, and you know, I know people took me as transphobic for one of my other delineations, which I'm really not. And also the word phobic doesn't really do anything. Cause I'm not afraid of trans or gay people at all. I just, maybe have uh, opinions about things that uh, we're going to be disagreeing with. And I also think when um, the LGBTQ community, um, which is now also a bunch of other acronyms and um, there's, well, there's just a weird, this is the, okay. I'm being really honest here. And I would actually love an explanation in the comments. What is up with the black and the brown stripe on the trans flag? Cause if it's about black and brown people with gay people, I, I like, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm having a cognitive distance here of, how does that not make it racist? But anyway, that's kind of besides the point. But um, again, me and so let me go back to this flag thing. Uh, let's talk about class for a mo moment. I want you to go to uh, any relatively poor community. Go drive around any of your local poor community. Um, you can call it the ghetto. You can call it uh, or just lower income, whatever you want to call it. And I want you to see how many pride flags there are. I want you to take note. And then I want you to drive in the rich suburbs. I'm talking the rich suburbs. And I want you to count how many pride flags you see. This is important because where I came from with this is, you know, here in Denver, like if you drive around Wash Park, driving around, this is, and this is where this comment came from. I was driving around Wash Park and every other fucking person's got a pride flag. And it's either everyone's gay, which also there's like a big, you know, well, when also you add a bunch of acronyms, like it's kind of like a big boat here that this is now starting to include, which is fine, whatever. But either everyone's gay or, or because rich people care more about what other people think of them. This is why they spend the money to put their kids in the nice schools. This is why they drive the Tesla and the Rivian. This is why they post the Ukrainian flag in their bio. They care more about what other people think then they actually care about what they're putting out there. That makes more sense in my opinion, because if you don't know how rich people work, uh, rich people strictly only care about what other people think of them and their higher societies. And they have to, uh, you know, pretty much um, race against them. This is why people go into debt for these insane houses they can't afford. And they uh, take out loans for their cars and they buy the newest Tesla and they buy the newest phone. It's, it's all to impress the people that are around them that can validate their little insecure ego. So I believe that that is worthy of criticism because what rich people are doing, uh, this is what the companies are doing, by the way, guys, people like Nike, people like Apple, the big corporations, actual leftists and liberals are supposed to be against. They go, oh, they got the gay flag up. They're on our side. That's how they use you as a pawn. That's how they use you. That's how they weaponize 
again, now they've weaponized the gay people and say, oh, you don't have the flag? You're not, are you homophobic? Well, no, I just maybe can see it, maybe criticism. And I also believe because the LGBTQ uh, community is so empowered at this day and age that it's worthy of criticism because I think any authoritative group has is worthy of criticism. And the way that I can prove that this is like worthy of criticism, that they actually have some authority is like, you can straight up be ostracized from society, lose your job, diversity, equity, and inclusion trainers, where it's literally like baked into corporate uh, culture that if you are not anything but completely, uh, like if you're not really repping a rainbow flag, like you are a homophobe or you are a transphobe and you're all these other slurs that they can easily just divide you and put you into a box against. And that's just not fair. That's just not fair. That goes against my, not only my personal beliefs, but like astrology. Like we need to honor people for their individual selves. Now can, again, for example, when I, when I, in, in my episode I did about men and I, and I used gay as a uh, derogatory term, I can understand the criticism, criticism behind that. Um, am I going to apologize? No, because again, it's not about an apology. It's about, am I obedient enough? Am I a good boy? And that's where, uh, you know, for example, uh, last year I got super attacked on Twitter and I usually get attacked on Twitter. But um, I haven't actually really talked about it on any of like my main publications yet. But I got attacked on Twitter because I made a joke about the sidereal astrology. And pe people took that as racist because there's a narrative that the sidereal, like that the tropical astrology is a tool of white supremacy, which is revisionist history. It's completely bogus. It's completely wrong. And it's a grift. But um, I got attacked for being like white. Like I have screenshots of people being like, this is why white people aren't allowed to do anything. This is why white people and white men shouldn't be in astrology. I even got attacked for my last name being white. And I brought that up, that hypocrisy up. And a lot of people were like, oh, you're using reverse racism. And it's like, <laughs> you can't get anywhere with this stuff. You can't, you know, show a little bit of the hypocrisy. You can't bring this type of stuff up. And the thing is, they didn't want an apology from me. I can make a tweet that says, Guys, I could do the whole, you know, what celebrities do is I have to be re-educated and I need to go to the re-education camps in order to actually know what I'm talking about. Like a lot of people in my last delineation were like, you need to talk to trans people in order to understand things. Like, as a trust me, as a white man, no one has been lectured about this stuff more than me. Do you know how many people come to me and have sat me down like a child to explain things that they think I don't know that I actually do? And the sad part is the reason I'm so passionate about this stuff is I was treated like I was stupid so many times in places like the astrology community uh, because a lot of the astrology community is academic type people where they know things and they're like, oh, you're so silly. You don't know. So you don't know what you're talking about. So let me sit you down and let me um, patronize you and, and let me treat you like a child and have this weird voice in my, and, and this weird smile that people like to do. It's, it's so fucked up. But because I was treated that way, I had to learn all this stuff because I swear to God, I'm not going to get people to fucking treat me like a goddamn infant and I want some fucking respect. So I had to learn all this stuff. So it gets really frustrating. People are like, you need to talk to trans people about this. Trans people aren't the only ones that are allowed to have opinion on this type of stuff. Like uh, everyone's allowed to have an opinion on this. So am I. And just because I'm not what like that same label doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about or I don't know my research or I don't have other opinions about it. This is really important stuff to understand. This is not going away anytime soon. And if you, again, when people say, how did we let Jews just get exterminated? And I know people are like, wow, like you're really, uh, how are you just referencing this to the, like the, the, to the Holocaust? Cause like at, cause usually things slowly, gradually decline, but then they just drop off to a, a worse situation. And I can imagine things getting a lot more worse. And what's important here is while people think they're being the good guy, while being like, you're, you're this, you're that. Like, you know, for example, this person, you know, uh, calling me homophobic. That fits a narrative in their head. Um, whether they believe that or not, whatever. I would hope, I would hope that I have been vocal enough about stuff to where I'm probably not homophobic. I might have some things and different opinions that might differ on the mainstream, but I'm not homophobic. I'm not scared of gay people. It's not even the right word. Like people use the word transphobic. It's not even appropriate anymore at this point. Um, but why, I guess I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm offended, but it's just more so that like comment of me just talking about the virtue signalers, specifically the rich people, because again, you can't cancel a company if they're using the rainbow flag. It doesn't matter if Tesla is using slave labor in Africa to get your precious cobalt for your stupid electric car. That doesn't matter. That slavery is literally still being used today. 
uh, what matters is, do you believe, like, are, are you a homophobe or not? And again, why this is so powerful is that it makes it very easy. It's so much easier to understand people when you just put a limit. It's the same thing with super right-wing Republican white people that just like, this is how black people are. And black people are like this. And which is, again, very like a racist type way of thinking. But again, you can see how it's racist when you say it's white people against black. But then you can't see how maybe it's a little fucked up when you put it, uh, any other label of people in that same you know circumstance. So, um, you know, uh, I... And this is where it comes hard because now let's say I'm being accused of homophobic. Okay. I wasn't being homophobic. I'm not homophobic, but how do I go about that? Right? Cause I want to make sure this person's heard and understood because my whole goal in my astrology work is we need to bring people together. We're never going to get anywhere unless we are at least working together. And once we actually understand that while you might think it's us versus them and all it's not, it's, it's not, it's the absolute super rich elite and not just the people that make a hundred million dollars a year. Like it's, there is money like I love like someone called uh, Kylie Jenner a climate criminal, which I think is super funny. I love that term um, just because I like making celebrities feel bad. But um, there is a, a class of people that have money that you don't even you have zero idea what it can do. There is a group of people that, are, that have so much fucking like if you think Kylie Jenner is a climate criminal for flying three minutes on a private jet. Wait till you hear about any of these people in like the world economic forum or uh i mean the list really you need to do the fucking research for yourself because maybe this isn't the space to talk about that but like they're like most of these people you think are the enemy or not and the people that are the enemy you don't even know who they are because that's how powerful they are that's how deep ingrained the shit is and so why to come back to this homophobe thing why i struggle with navigating that is i can understand why i took offense to that but then when it's like oh you're homophobic and i don't want anything to do with that it's like it's hard to explain that like while i can understand that maybe that wasn't necessarily i don't want to say super considerate because no one actually gives a shit about consideration where i felt challenged is like you don't actually see me as a homophobe like most people would probably like you could look at literally anyone down the street, even like super, you know, like right wing Republicans. And they might be like, OK, yeah, sure. Maybe I don't necessarily agree with, you know, gay people, but whatever. They're not really going to care now to say that, you know, I'm a homophobe. I take that, you know, I guess personally in the sense where like the last thing I want is to be looked at. Again, this is what was so hard about when I was attacked on Twitter about being called a racist. Like that's as a white guy, that's the last thing I want to be called as racist. Um, and I think that's a really low ball thing to like use against people because it's again, it's 2022. I don't give like I I literally am struggling to pay like fucking food because food keeps going up and gas keeps going up. Like I'm more worried about my own problems than I am about whether like what gay people are doing. But what's f frustrating about that is trying to bring awareness to the idea that like, you don't actually think I'm a homophobe. You might think that I could, I could definitely say homo, like, I don't want to say even homophobic, but definitely like things that I could offend gay people or things that might be construed as homophobic, but that's not really the truth. And in those moments where I'm called like a homophobe like that, I don't necessarily feel like I am being uh, recognized and witnessed for the individual that I am. I have a lot of gay clients. I have a lot of trans clients too. And I don't want uh, any of those groups of people to feel like afraid to talk to me because my job as an astrologer, number one, is to help people regardless of what your race, what your gender, sex, any of that stuff. Because <laughs> really, it's besides the point. I think the only thing, and this is, I, I talked about this on my Pluto and Aquarius where you know some people called me a transphobe and I just really think trans people should really be skeptical about surgery because they want to come after you because um, again, big pharma makes so much money. And uh, uh, again, I, I speak from like you have just you really don't know how evil Big Pharma is until you deal with it. Like my dad um, having to see his brain cancer, um, you know, they like cancer literally runs off sugar and they fed him nothing but sugar and they radiated his brain like complete. And, and they were like, oh, like I'm pretty sure my dad died of the radiation to his brain and the chemo and not necessarily the cancer. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, I lost him and then I started doing all the math going, oh, this is how the system works. So again, this is where, you know, people call me a transphobe because I'm like, you just, you, you need to be aware of like, they're coming after your body and they want to get your body because they want you to make you a patient for life. Cause there's also all these statistics that like hormones and stuff like that are going to give you cancer in the long term, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, 
That doesn't mean I'm afraid of trans people. That doesn't mean I even judge trans people. In fact, I have a lot of sympathy for a lot of the more marginalized, what we'll say marginalized communities right now, because again, I've said this before, we're all in this together. You think it's us versus them and it's not. It's literally this powerful people against human beings. They're trying to attack human beings as a whole, as a, as a group. Why, like, why do you think all this stuff's going on? You know, I made an episode about this on my Patreon and I'm thinking about making a, a podcast about this of, um, you know how they got rid of the Native Americans? Do you know how they were able to commit a fucking genocide of Native Americans? It was easy. They took away their food. They murdered the buffalo, the bison, I should say, to a complete extinction. That's what they're trying to do now with cows. By the way, that was also uh, Saturn and Aquarius and the nodes in Scorpio and Taurus. So we're having a similar transit. And that was also Neptune and Taurus, Pluto and Taurus. You have all these Taurus placements here. Rahu, Pluto, Neptune. And we're talking about the bull, the buffalo, the way of life of the Native Americans. And they murdered all of them so they can commit a genocide against Native Americans. And now they're trying to make meat illegal and they're trying to tell you that it's bad for you. While Saturn's in Aquarius and we're having all in the North Node in Taurus and Uranus in Taurus. Like, you don't think history repeats itself? You think we're in some new age of things that we've never done before? One of my favorite Bible verses, I couldn't tell you which one it is, but there ain't nothing new under the sun. This is the same shit, different day. And we need to be aware of that as astrologers and people that practice astrology. Now, uh, let me also be very clear here too. I'm open to criticism. There are gonna be times where I say something stupid and I say something wrong and that people are gonna get offended too. But let me tell you this, unless you are a public figure that speaks, you have no, like, everyone gets offended with every little thing I've said. I There's no winning in any of this stuff. So I can't sit here and worry about how people get offended. I really can't. Otherwise, I would go crazy and I would want to kill myself, which is why this stuff is works the way that it does. So, like, social influence is so powerful. Like, of course, I don't want to offend any of you guys. Of course, I don't want you guys to be hurt by what I said. But I'm not perfect. And if I'm worried about that, then I can't get my truth out there and I can't get my message out there. So on this idea of just placating to people and just be like, oh, well, well you're this, you're that. It's, it's hard to be like, well, you know, this person probably didn't think I was necessarily a homophobe, but what I said was homophobic, but it was so homophobic that we have to, you know, create this divide. It's like, it's very tricky grounds for people to, to, to work with. And I know I'm not the only one that's experienced this. A lot of people, even the people, like you can literally be trans and being called transphobic and shit like that. Like there, the, it doesn't matter what you are, you can be othered and you can be ostracized from society, which when are people going to wake up to the, the fact that that's what Saturn and Aquarius is? It is authorities and governments and, and, and literally dividing society. And it's all mental. It has nothing to do with physical. It's all, it's all ideas. It's all, you know, how we identify ourselves within our societies, within our tribes. That's why the word tribalism is coming back up. So why I'm making this is, again, you know, the last thing I want to do is, uh, you know, make gay people feel uncomfortable, make, you know, people think I'm a homophobe. Uh, but the other thing is, is like, that's, I guess, being for me being attacked that way, I don't feel like I'm actually being criticized fairly. Like, for example, when I was attacked on Twitter, um, everyone went after me for literally my skin, my gender, uh, and my name. Uh, they all, you know, I, I got a lot attacked for just having my last name white. But when I get attacked for my sex and gender, yeah, I, I can use the race card because that is what racism is. It, like racism isn't exclusive to Americans. Did you know only 5% of slaves came to America and the rest of them, the other millions of them actually went to places like Brazil. You have Argentinians who pretty much like completely wiped out their uh, Native American population. Not, uh, I mean, yes, they're Native Americans, their Native population. Like slave, I mean, like slavery, racism. I mean, if you want to talk about a racist society, let's talk about like Japanese and Koreans. Uh, they will straight up fucking like ostracize their children for dating someone who's like South Asian and a little bit of tan. So this idea of like racism is not inherently American, by the way. Um, now, the idea of whiteness and like where people, you know, this is where I do sympathize is like the people of color and the scale of whiteness. That's kind of true in, in all areas. And so, and again, I definitely recognize the fact that like people judge each other based off their skin color. Totally. Like that is a prejudice that is operating very well in a lot of cultural societies, but it doesn't help when you use the same, you know, that's like being like, that's like uh, America. Well, this is actually what America is doing. That's like America using nuclear bombs to kill people, but then being like, no one else can use nuclear bombs, but I'm going to use nuclear bombs. It's, hip it's uh, Hippocratic and it's just dangerous. Hippocratic? Hypocritical. Um, and it's dangerous. 
So, um, again, I think the other thing too is a, a big part of why I'm talking about this is like, at this point, like, I don't really, like, I can't control what you guys think, think of me, but the only thing I can do is be honest with what's going on. And I would rather be honest with you and be, and be judged for being honest than being a liar and a shill. A lot of people are, by the way, a lot of people are right now because they're too much of pussies to face what the truth is. And it's even sad about astrologers seeing that because there's a lot of truth in this astrology. Like I wouldn't be able to make any sense of COVID and the lockdowns and all of this stuff happening if it wasn't for astrology. I'd have no way of making sense of it. It would feel you. It would feel like a dream, a bad dream. But um, as an astrologer, I have to be honest with you guys. And again, if you, if it, you have every reason, again, I'm going to be wrong about a lot of stuff. For example, I might do this video in, in 10 or 20 years. I might look back and like, wow, that was, I was really wrong about that. I'm willing to be wrong. And I've told you guys, I've been wrong about predictions before. And I've told you guys on my weeklies when I say something and it's wrong, but I've also been right about a lot of stuff. If you've been a client of mine, most of my clientele is return clients and they come back for a reason. And it's not because I was wrong. It was because I was right. And so again, my, what my job is, is to be honest, because I'd rather have you judge me for being honest than judge me for being a liar and a hypocrite, which a lot of people are right now because they're fucking afraid. They're afraid of being called a homophobe. They're afraid of being called a racist. They're afraid of being all of this stuff. And what sucks is these labels don't even matter anymore. Like you can't call it, like for example, this is what's really dumb about the vaccine thing was they, they forced the vaccine down everyone's throats, which then turned a bunch of people into anti-vaxxers, quote unquote anti-vaxxers, which they were never not. So now when people are like, oh, you're an anti-vaxxer, well, that you took away the power in that term and you just made a whole group of people anti-vaxxers, which they weren't. And so now when you call an, someone an anti-vaxxer, it doesn't mean anything. It means zero now because there's no truth embedded into it. And it's just a label to give someone to make it easier in your mind to figure out who's on your side and who's on not, not on your side, which is tribalistic, which is the Saturn and Aquarius stuff, which is not going away anytime soon with Pluto going into Aquarius. And the way that they're, and again, what, and why you might be like, well, Cameron, why is this bad? Why is tribalism so bad? We live in a peace. We live in a very peaceful society. And you personally, and I'm speaking, and again, I love when people give me shit about being like, I don't want to call myself um, a patriot. I would consider myself a little bit more patriotic, but like you have no idea. If you're in America and you think this is bad, you have no idea how good you got it. That's how you're so privileged that you can literally say you have it bad. It's so, and this is the most peaceful time in human history. Never before has there been a peace, a time of peace this way and abundance and fruitfulness and, and equality ever before, ever. And that's going away. It is. We're only gonna get a more divided society. That Saturn and Aquarius gave us a good blip of what is to come with Pluto and Aquarius. You don't think they're done with lock, you think they're done with lockdowns? That was just the first lockdown. Wait till they do climate lockdowns, which by the way, did we vote for that? Did we vote for the uh, ability for the government to just shut us down? And again, you might be pro lockdown. Um, and that's, I think, a very privileged understanding of the situation is if you're pro lockdown, you're, you have life, you're a part of the Zoom class and you're a part of a very privileged few that can still benefit in those type of situations, but you don't necessarily have the right to lock down half of society, um, especially over a disease that no one has control of spreading because it literally spreads in the air and it mutates and then also was literally fucking manufactured in a lab um, with no accountability being held to those people. It's literally insane to me that the same people that want the lockdowns forever have zero uh, incentive to look into the, they're like, oh, it was just came from a bat, no big deal. Like, aren't we supposed to be against like corrupt governments and corrupt money and, and big businesses? And it just feels like the same people that are like, uh, they're supposed to be against corruption in the government and, and, you know, fascists and corporations are the same people that are like, if you don't take the fascist corporate medicine, you are banished. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's really hard to navigate this guys. Um, so This is what I want to talk about. I want to end on a positive note here because a lot of this is just me kind of ranting. Um, let me also say this too, because like I, I, like I, I, like not to use my chart, but I'm a moon in Libra. Um, it's on my midheaven. It's in my eleventh house. Like I, like what was really hard about getting, I guess, canceled so much on Twitter was it was a lot of my astrology colleagues stopped being my friends, like people that I had, I came to my house and I partied with and I spoke to very, you know, privately on a lot of things, they stopped being my friends because of all that. And that was really hard. Um, I really do care about what people think of me. And especially too, as a, as a content creator, as you know, 
like in my discord, why this is upsetting to me is I want to create a safe space. I really do. But when, and, and again, I, and, and I'm, and I like can definitely recognize when I'm going to have shortcomings in that I need to uh, do some changes about it. Like, you know, something I addressed was like, Hey, if you got a problem with something, I know I can be intimidating. I like, I want you to come to me personally with it, but also maybe have another resource. Um, and there's no way I'm like, for example, I can't explain to this person why I'm not homophobic because I can be like, well, I'm not homophobic because I have gay friends. It's like being like, I'm not racist. I have black friends. Like there's no argument there. You know, once you're kind of given the label, there's no apologizing. And this is something I said a moment ago. Uh, apologizing is not about people wanting to make sure you're sorry. Apologizing is making sure that you are obedient and that you fall in line. And I'm a sun and Leo opposite Uranus and Aquarius. You do that shit to me, I'm going to be even more rebellious. That's my problem. That is a problem I have because it gets me in a lot of trouble. But I don't like being told I need to be obedient. Like I could have apologized to everyone on Twitter that called me a racist and but that wasn't true. Like I'm not a fucking racist because I fucking criticize the sidereal astrology. Like and I'm sorry, black people don't own the sidereal zodiac number fucking one. If anybody Indians do. Um, but that's a whole nut that's a whole nother fucking rabbit hole to get down into. So when you 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 know, when people ask you to apologize, like don't. Like it's, it is a power move and it is to make sure that you are obedient. And again, that is how they get you to sit down, shut up and do what you're told and not question things and not think for yourself. And this is a big thing that I'm really big about on my channel is thinking for your goddamn self. I've said it before on my weekly horoscopes. I want you to disagree with me because something I love is I don't have a bunch of followers that are just blindly being like, everything you say is right. I get, I get so many comments. Like, in fact, I just saw a girl a couple of weeks ago, she was like totally being like, you're wrong about this and this and that. And then she just commented recently. She's like, I, I, I literally hate you because I disagree so much, but you're also like really good. I really like that. I really do. Don't get me wrong. It is a little like, I, I'm a Libra moon. I want everyone to agree with me. Of course, I'm a Leo. I want everyone to agree with me. But I know that it's healthy when people don't. And you're probably going to have disagreements with this. And that's fine. Say I'm in the comments below. I do read the comments. They kind of, I, I probably shouldn't because they get to me a little bit, but I do. Um, but this whole, like using labels to define people, to define yourself. Like I know for a fact, I'm not a homophobe and I don't need to prove it to anybody to know that I know for my fucking goddamn self. And if you don't think that that's your projection, cause I know I'm not. And if I was, I'd be fucking real with you about it. I'd tell you how I really feel. Cause I do. I'm honest with you guys. So what I want to talk about, what I want to end on this on a more positive note is we have got to come together. And this isn't like a, we all need to like, again, I, while I want the like Aquarian kumbaya moment to happen, it's not going to be like a, oh my gosh, like we're going to make peace on earth and everyone's going to get together. But we need to be better as individuals, making better individual judgments and being more discerning about these kind of narratives. What does that look like? Um, you know, for example, I'm having my, um, like a, my, uh, what's it called? Um, my astrology picnic here, it, here in Denver on September 4th on Sunday, please come. I would love for you guys to come if you're in the Denver area or anywhere else. It's on Labor Day weekend. It's a picnic and I want everyone to come. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. There is a part of me, I mean, for one, I'm very nervous about it because it just, you know, for example, you know, am I going to get yelled at for no one wearing masks, but then also, you know, I might judge people for wearing a mask and that's my own shit. I can't blame people for like wanting to wear a mask and, you know, feeling like that would be the best way to protect themselves. I really can't now. I could, I could tell them maybe like why wearing a mask outside might be like wrong or whatever, but um, I would rather have people come into a space with differences, but all sharing the fact that we're into astrology. It's like we, we at some point, we've got to be working together and know that we're all going to have differences, but that we all have to be together because this is how you get freedom. You can't have a free society without politeness, without unity, without coming together. And the powers that be don't, they know that. So they want you to be divided. So while I think it is important to maybe be discerning, like again, like, um, well, for one, not everyone's going to, you know, agree with what you say. Not everyone's going to, well, for what I'm trying to say here is like, uh, for example, like, um, transphobe, homophobe thing, like, um, not everyone's going to agree with you on, on every single topic, but also your idea of why they think that may not necessarily be true. 
Like for example, someone might be like, oh, I'm not getting the vaccine. And you might go, oh, well, you're an anti-vaxxer because that's just how, that's how the narrative is built, right? But it might be because they suffer from a real disease that uh, would put them in, that would actually harm them if they took the vaccine and that they can't take the vaccine because it would literally harm them more. But those people get ignored in society because they're just anti-vaxxers, even though it's literally for their health to not take the vaccine. So you don't really know what someone, like you you don't really know, what's the, what's the saying? Like you got to walk a mile in someone's shoes. You don't really know what someone's going on in their head. You don't know the road that they've walked down. And so it's important to like, hey, you know, for example, if you think I'm more homophobic and transphobic, then, then you can tolerate, you know, maybe only listen to me a little bit. Maybe don't listen to everything I said. Maybe, maybe stop listening to me. That's, but you going out of your way to like, you know, again, and, and, and I'm not talking about the specific example because the specific example, let me also say too, like if you are, um, because again, this is as, as an astrologer, as a person who has like a group, I really do want to make sure people feel like safe and comfortable and open and honest. That doesn't mean though, I'm going to just like, you know, placate into whatever, you know, thing that you've projected onto me. I can reason with that and I'm going to defend myself if I believe in it. And I will acknowledge my, my, uh, shortcomings when I do have the shortcomings. Um, and that is not an easy thing. So I want people to feel comfortable doing that, but I also don't like, I'm just bringing this up because it's so easy to just put these labels and terms on the people to put them in these convenient boxes so you know who to trust and who not to. And that's just not how the world works. Life's much more complicated than that. Um, I also think that this idea of segregation, like it's now really cool to be like, you know, like there's, um, uh, like everyone's just trying to segregate themselves uh, into the, like, you know, um, like there's like, and this might get a little touchy with some people. Like there's a lot of like black communities that are like, this is only for black people, um, which is like segregation, which again, there's also a part of it. That's like a lot of the black communities and their culture has been really like taken away from them for all types of reasons. Like, and now if you want me to agree with a lot of liberal stuff, it's like, there is a there's an argument for um, institutional racism, not necessarily that it's baked into the law, but you got a lot of it, like a lot of cops are racists and that's why they end up shooting people. It's not necessarily because they're trained that way. But then there's also a lot of other cultural stuff within the black community that doesn't get talked about. Like it's 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 super racist when a guy a white guy shoots a black guy. But then when you talk about black on black crime. It's like, oh, well, that's just black people. That's, that, no one ever wants to talk about like how the black communities like literally just kill each other all the time. And that's like a, a terrible thing to bring up. So this idea of just like segregating things is it doesn't really help. Um, I thought we've, you know, you think you'd, we, we'd learned that in history by now. Um, and if you really want to be more inclusive, that means bringing people together that don't share the same opinions. This is why I'm so mad at ISAR. Like ISAR is literally like, oh, we need a vac vaccine passport to come to our conference, even though it's 2022 and we know that the vaccine doesn't stop the spread. It's fucking fascist in my opinion. But um, the more that we separate ourselves, the more this divide is going to happen. And that's what they want because when they can divide us, they can pour propaganda down our throats and then we can enable whatever sh corrupt, shitty government is going to take away our uh, freedom uh, super easily. Super easy to do. That's how history works. Read a history book. Read any. This is how it works. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not spewing shit out my ass right now. Um, but we have, we, we have to come together, and, and you know, where, where, again, like I, I really want to be clear that I want to take personal responsibility. Where I'm not perfect, and I know that, like, I can say things that are going to be mean and offend people. Like I know, like for example, I used retarded in that in that men's one. No one actually gave me shit for saying retarded, and I can see why you know people get offended by that. Um. And again, like I'm also a very like like a, a aggressively passionate person, and I know that I need to tamper things down to be more you know for example like in this um in in my Discord you know group chat I need to be more aware of how my following is taking this in rather than me just spewing out whatever I you know whatever I want to say off the top uh, off the cuff, um so I you know that's something I'm going to be working on you know especially to providing a safe place because the la the literally the last thing I want is for someone to feel uncomfortable I'm not always going to be able to control that. But I will, like, I can, I will, and I can do more to do that. But there is a certain line where, like, it's out of my hands, it's out of my control, and I might say something that you disagree with, and that might make you feel uncomfortable. But I want you to know that that's not me. Like, you know, if you're gay, I don't hate you because you're gay. If you're trans, I don't hate you because you're trans. Um, I don't like. I'm not especially phobic. Phobic is just the. I like. I wish people would use a different term, like, because it just it's not the appropriate term anymore. But anyway. So 
I guess to end this, I mean, really, this is a, this is Sun and Leo opposite Saturn Aquarius, full moon and Aquarius. And I know I'm going to get so much shit about this episode. I know the comments are just going to be really wild and crazy. A lot of you will probably agree and a lot of you are going to disagree. And, um, you know, at least the, the thing is, though, I don't see anyone talking about this shit. I don't see a fucking soul talking about Saturn Aquarius and how divided society is. And, um, you know, what's the point of doing astrology if you can't fucking call a spade a spade? Like, if you can't look up at the sky and say, this is how this is symbolically, you know, doing things to Earth, it's it's really insane. And there's a lot of astrologers that are like in that are that are in the Aquarian role of like, oh, it really is us versus them. I mean, we're the good guys. We've done everything right. But those are the bad guys. And it's all their fault. And it's all their problems. And it's the people that didn't lock down. And it's the anti-vaxxers. And it's the and it's the this and it's the that. And it's just not how it works. It's just not how it works. The same thing with the Republicans. Republicans love to do the same thing. They love to think that they're different. They're not. They're, they're the same shit. Um, this is why I try to tell people I'm very like, I would almost say like radical individual. I'm a radical independent. Um, I believe that everything is so corrupt at this point that, you know, nothing looks correct. And so, um, you know, the least that I can do right now is talk about it to be honest with you guys. Like I can't, I wish I could provide more solutions. I wish I could tell you, I'm like, this is what the problem is and this is how we're going to address it. I can t t tell you what I think that is. And in my opinion, that is like actually calling this for what it is. And these labels and these putting people in boxes, it's, it's just, it just doesn't honor people's individuality. It doesn't honor people in the way that they should, you know, um, like for, like, for example, like I, when I made that, you know, like, you know, trans people may be being hesitant about getting surgery. People are like, you need to talk to trans people about this. It's like, Trans people aren't a monolith. Like every trans person is going to have a different experience. Just like every gay person is going to have a different experience. Just like every black person is going to have a different experience. Black people aren't a monolith either. Like uh, white people aren't a monolith either. But this is what the Saturn and Aquarius stuff does to people. They make you think this way. And it makes you go crazy. We have to honor people for individual. And, and, and this is hard. Again, I'm guilty of this stuff. I am not saying I'm perfect. But that's why I'm bringing this up is I have found myself guilty of this. And I need to talk about it because I have work to do, just like you have work to do. What I hope that you could take away from this episode is simply being more open-minded when you see this stuff. And um, again, like I, I, I guess the biggest thing here too that I want to say is I don't want, you know, if this person's listening, I don't want that person to feel like I'm writing them off uh, of their concerns. Um Again, I could I could see how my comment about like the 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 pride flag thing can be turned that way, but also I didn't feel like really looked at it on an individual level, and it was much more like, oh, you didn't agree with the flag. It's like, well, things can be things are allowed to be criticized. Gay people are allowed to be criticized. Trans people are allowed to be criticized. Every with everything is allowed to be criticized, and it's your right to criticize that, especially when there's a valid point, and that valid point is people are using these pride flags to just virtue signal and get away with other stuff. Because it's easy to get away with this autocracy and all this corporate shit when you, you know, are all about equity, diversity, and inclusion, and you're donating and you have your ESG score is high and you're carbon neutral and X, Y, and Z. Just because, you know, you you're flying a pride flag and that your virtue signaling does not leave you out of criticism, especially too when it's this idea of you are free of criticism if you just wave this flag around. Because that's what it really seems at this day and age. And I think gay people need to be more skeptical of it because they're weaponizing you guys. Like they're like, like straight, and in my opinion, I think it's more bigoted for people to be like, oh, we're super, you know, like pro gay and stuff like that. And then they can just do whatever they want and they'll probably end up still being homophobic anyway. Um, I, I, that's where I think it's more of a problem. And that's my opinion. I'm allowed to have it. And this is my show. If you really, if you got a different opinion, make your own fucking show. Listen to somebody else. But, I also don't think I'm wrong in this. I, I, I think that there's a lot of honesty with that criticism. And this isn't to be homo, like, you know, all gay people, all trans people, you know, just to be outwardly homophobic or whatever, or like hateful. Like, uh, you know, the last thing you need to be is, is hateful to anyone. And this doesn't give you the right to attack anybody or anything. But can we just have some nuance with the situation? For the love of Christ, for the fucking love of God, can we have a nuance in a situation? And when you're going to address things to people, actually do like, I really respect this person for messaging me about it. They didn't just like take this and post it on in, in social media and, and, you know, talk about it. They addressed me with it. I really respect that. And I think that's what people, more people need to do. Now, 
Um, I wasn't going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry that like, yes, this was homophobic. Yes. I need to be reeducated. Cause that's what, like, again, there's this whole reeducation thing, which is super like fucking like, I, every time I hear reeducation, I hear reeducation camps, which is, you know, I don't even want to go into the history of that, but, um, you know, this stuff isn't over yet. Um, we have a lot more to go with this divide stuff and wait until the powers that be fully harness that power. Cause that's what Pluto is. Pluto is power, corruption, intensity, and it's going into Aquarius. So it's going to be really important to have these kind of conversations and at least be open about it. Cause I could sit here and be like every other astrology, like this full moon is about setting boundaries. And this is what I fucking hated about reading this all over Twitter. Every other Twitter, every other astrologer on Twitter right now is like, this is a full moon to set boundaries. We are so, we have so many boundaries. In fact, Everyone is so boundaried up that we are completely divided and we are not even talking to each other. There's plenty of boundaries. Trust me. What we actually need to do is maybe look over the wall and say, wow, why are we so divided? Why are there so many boundaries? How can we actually be more inclusive without dividing and separating society? That's what's really important here, guys. So I guess just to really end this, um, again, you know, number one, as uh, as an astrologer, as a content creator that has that has like a, a community, the last thing I want to do is make people feel uncomfortable. Um, and I want to provide at least an opportunity where, and I, I can't always control that. I can't always control it. Um, and I can't always be responsible for it too, because there's just going to be certain things like, you know, for example, I've, I've been told that I'm very intimidating and I try not to come off that way. I, I think of myself as much more jovial than Saturnian, but I do want to do my best to at least provide that. But the way that I can provide a safer space is providing a place where everyone can be honest about how they feel. Um, providing a place where if they have a problem, they can address it with me. That's how I can do that. Um, I can't do that by making sure that I am in a consensus and signaling every virtue that society wants me to. I can't because I'm going to be wrong about something and, and there's going to be opinions that I have that people are going to differ from and that's okay. So the only thing that I can do to provide a safe environment is by saying, you know, you're allowed to have your opinions, you're allowed, and you're allowed to share them with me. I don't want you, I don't want people, the last thing I want is, the last thing I want is people to be scared of saying that stuff. So again, I really respect this person for messaging me personally. Um, you know, I, I I wish I could, I, you know, they said that they didn't want to bring it up on the, actually like on the, you know, message thread because they were, they didn't want to make it a problem and me attack them or cancel them. And I, and I really understand that fear. Um, and so again, the, I wish they would have. I wish they would have done that. Now that I'm thinking about it, too, like it, so we could address it then and there. And but that's what we need to change is having these spaces to have these conversations. But at that same time, we also like you know, the last thing I want to do is explain myself and then just be looked at as still homophobic or whatever. And this is why I try not to explain myself because um, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't they. And they want an apology from you for obedience and for power, not because they actually want to help you. That's really important with all of this cancellation stuff is they don't really care about you being sorry and that you are better. They want you to be obedient and they want to have that power over you. Because, you know, I'll also this is like all these online voices are all people that were like bullied and shit like that. So they they love power whenever they can get it. So I'm going to leave you guys with that message. Um. Again, I, I, the other thing to really end on is like, I'm, I, I'm young and I'm still learning. Okay. I, and, and, and no one here is going to be perfect with any of this stuff. So rather than sitting here and listening to this and be like, well, this is where you're right. And you've got it wrong. I'd rather you take this and use what good you got out of this and ignore the rest that you didn't like. Cause that's how you really use information is like you, you take what works for you and you leave the rest. And if you've got a problem with the rest of it, save your energy, save your energy. It's not that important. Cause here's the other thing is I'm, I, I hate to say this, but it's also like, I like when people try to correct me in my language is when I shut off, I'm not going to listen to you. If you try to correct me in my language, um, I find that very belittling. I find that very disrespectful because I don't do that. Cause if I were to do that to other people, um, I would be looked at as very scary and very intimidating and stuff like that. So anyway, that is your full moon on Saturn and Aquarius message. We're divided and these labels and this division 
is only going to keep coming and it isn't until we're aware of it and we bring some illumination, which is all I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to have the conversation because no one else fucking seems to want to. So let me know. Let me know what your guys' thoughts or opinions are all that. Even, you know, I'm sure, you know, it's really hard. You know, I will say this as a content creator, it's kind of hard because um, I get like 99% of my po- uh, comments are very positive, but it's the 1% of negative ones I really hold on to. And if you're a content creator, you could probably understand that. Um, but uh, let me know what your thoughts are below. I'm I'm more curious about reading the room and knowing your thoughts, even if they are disagreeing with me. Um, they might upset me, but I would rather know it. So anyway, I really love and appreciate every single one of you guys that are here and listening to this, especially all the way to the end. Um, you know, you are very, very powerful individuals and you have to be the change that you want to see in the world. And that's such a corny saying, but there's so much power in that. There's so much freedom in that. Like if you be the bigger person and you and and stop being afraid of these of the of the of the you know of the group of people that want to attack you. Stop being afraid of the other side and 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 all that stuff. And you live life honestly in the way that you believe. That's how you overcome this stuff. So I really hope you guys can walk away with some of that, Um, because that's really the only way to go about this is being honest with who you are and what you believe in and not being afraid. So I'll leave you guys with that. I love you and I'll see you next time.